analyze the companies. Well, Charlie, Charlie ran something called Wheeler Munger, and uh, his portfolio was even more interesting. So we'll start with you, uh, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> He ran a more concentrated portfolio than I did in those days. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think people would be greatly helped. You wouldn't recognize the names, most of them, of the early Buffett partnership. You'd recognize American Express, but they rattle off some of the names. Yeah, well, we can start with Mosaic Tile and, and uh, uh, the map Meadow, Meadow River Coal and Land. <laughs> there's, there's hundreds of them. Uh, Flag Utica, Philadelphia Running Coal and Iron, you name it. Uh, I've literally owned, I bet I've owned four or five hundred names at one time or another, but most of the money's been made in about ten of them. <laughs> the, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I couldn't name ten books either that, have, that I regard as that much better than the next ten. My mind is a blend of so many books, I can't even sort it out anymore. Mm. Yeah, well, the intelligent investor changed my life in terms of, I, had, I literally had read every book in the Alma Public Library by the time I was 11 on the subject of investing. Uh, and there were a lot of books, and there were, a lot, there were technical books, Edwards and McGee, I mean, that was a classic in those days, and a whole bunch of them, Garfield drew. But, uh, and I loved, I enjoyed reading them a lot. Some of them I read more than once, but I, I never developed a philosophy about it. I, had, I, I enjoyed it. I charted stocks. I did all that sort of thing. Uh, Graham's book uh, gave me a philosophy, a bedrock philosophy on investing that made sense. I mean, he taught me how to think about a stock. He taught me how to think about the stock market. And he taught me that the market was there not not to instruct me, but to serve me. And he used that Mr. famous Mr. Market example. He, he taught me to think about stocks as pieces of businesses rather than ticker symbols or things that, you know, you could charter or something of the sort. And so it was that philosophy uh, and in some way uh, further influenced by Phil Fisher's book. And, which, and Phil Fisher was just telling me the same thing that Charlie was telling me, which was that it's very important to get into a business that had fundamentally good economics and one that you could ride with for decades rather than one where you had to go from flower to flower every day. Uh, and those, that philosophy has carried me along. Now, I've learned different ways of applying it over the years, and, but it's the way I think about businesses now. I, 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 I'm, I have not found any aspect of that bedrock philosophy that, that, that has flaws in it. At, uh, you have to learn how to apply in different ways. Um, so those, those are the books that, that influenced me. And of course, in other arenas, Charlie, and Charlie's probably read more biography than anybody that I, I know of. Uh, uh, and I like to read a lot of it. We just got through reading the, the Joe Kennedy biography. You, you've read that, haven't you now, Charlie? And, yeah. You know, I'm not sure you want to emulate everything he did, but, but it's still no, interesting no. reading. <laughs> This is, uh, we read for the enjoyment of it. I mean, it's been enormously beneficial to us, but the reason we read is that it's, that it's fun. And, uh, you know, it, it's still fun. And uh, uh, on top of it, we, got, we have gotten very substantial benefits from it. Uh, my life would have been different if, I, if Ben Graham hadn't gone to the trouble of writing a book, which he had no financial need to do at all. You know, I, I would have had a very different life.